Now that pretty much covers section 7.1. We're going to be looking at 7.2. Um, 7.2 is, is pretty simple, actually. Um, it's reducing and multiplying um, fractions after I always suggest that you reduce before you multiply fractions. But um, let's go ahead and get section 7.2 done. It's gonna be kind of a long video, sorry about that. Maybe you can pause it and come back. But, um, and, and I did split the two homeworks, seven one and seven two, but this is, this is seven two. Um, here, again, anything in the numerator, going back to your basic math, anything in the numerator can reduce with anything in the denominator. So here, uh, I'm gonna rewrite it so it's a bit larger. Okay, um, you can, the fives cancel. All right, again, this is all multiplication. You can just start canceling. And the two goes into here once, two goes into here twice. Okay. The A's will reduce. And again, when you're reducing uh, variables, you subtract the exponents. So on, in this case, we will be taking this, um, we'll make that a two. When you take three minus one, you get a two. So all that's left in the numerator is an a squared. Okay. And in the denominator is a two. So, oh yeah, remember you multiply across. So two times one is two and a squared times one is a squared. So, you know, you just reduce them anything in the numerator with anything in the denominator, and then you multiply straight across with what's left. And your answer, if you reduce here, your answer here will be reduced already. So, all right, let's look at the next one. Well, this is sort of, consider this kind of like a whole number times a fraction. When you're doing that, put your um, whole number over one. So let's go ahead, we'll have x squared minus 3x minus 10 over 1 times x plus 4 minus 10x plus 25. Make sure that's centered. Yeah, you guys can see all that. Good. You guys, you have to factor before you can cancel. So you'll just, you know, this goes back to chapter 6. Um, factoring these, um, I think I can go ahead and come up here. I probably should have dropped it down, but I'm hoping that won't be. X times X gives you X squared. Um, let's see, minus 10. Let's go with five and two, give you minus, uh, give you 10, minus five and plus two, give you the minus three. So I factor that one, it's gone. And let's see, this next one, oh, looks like I'm gonna try it. It's five times five gives you 25. So let's go with that. And we'll make them both negative because that gives you positive 25. And now everything's factored. I got rid of this right here. And you can cancel anything in the numerator on top with anything in the denominator. We'll go ahead and we'll cancel these, x minus five with one of those. Um, let's see, the x plus two, there's nothing. The, this doesn't reduce with anything. This doesn't reduce with anything down here. So we're left with, you multiply straight across, x plus two times x plus four. And in the denominator, you multiply one times x minus five. All right, you know, and you're done. I, and if you put parentheses around that, you don't have to, but you can. I'm hoping that my math lab will accept that. Otherwise you'd have to use the FOIL 
but I, I, I believe that, that you can finish at this point. You don't have to use the FOIL and multiply your numerator out, but that's all there is. So you're factoring and canceling anything in the numerator with anything in the denominator. Let's try another one. All right, let's, we have some factoring to do. We've got four, four things that need to be factored here. Let's start with this first one. We're gonna factor that numerator by taking out a 10. That leaves me with x because 10 times x is 10x plus two. 10, 10 times two is the 20, perfect. Let's do the denominator of this one. Again, always look for the greatest common factor. Down there, there's nothing. So I've got 2x. Let me extend that out there. 2x times x gives you 2x squared. Uh, let's see, plus 1. 1 times 1 gives you the 1. I want a positive, but then when I combine them, I want a negative three, so I'll make them both negative. Okay, and I do end up with a negative three X. Perfect. Let's go to the next numerator. Looking for what's in common. We're right here, we're gonna factor that one. And there's nothing. So this is a difference of two squares. x times x gives you x squared. 1 times 1 gives you 1. We have a minus and a plus. All right, so there we go. The last one, greatest common factor of a 5. 5 times x gives you 5x. 5 times 2 gives you 10. The hard part's done. All you have to do now is anything in the numerator can cancel with anything in the denominator, which means we can cancel this x plus 2, it's in the numerator, with the x plus 2 in the denominator. Uh, the x minus 1 with the x minus 1. Uh, let's see. Well, and we have the 10 and the 5. Those are numbers that are out in front. They're also multiplied here so they can cancel. 5 goes into there once, 5 goes into there twice. I think we're done with the canceling. So in the numerator, I'm going to take the 2 and I'm going to multiply it with the x plus 1. So I will have two times x plus one. In the denominator, I have two x minus one times one, which is two x minus one. Okay, now, you, should be, you, you can stop here. Some of you said, well, I'm gonna multiply this out. Now, can you reduce, you know, when you multiply that you use the distributive property, can you cancel the 2x? Say no, you cannot, because you cannot separate the 2x from the 2. Whenever you have a plus sign or you have a subtraction sign, you cannot separate them. You cannot reduce anything here. They go as a group when they have a plus or subtraction sign or they don't go at all. The groups have to match exactly. So your answer, either leave it here or multiply it out, you're done either way. So again, do not separate plus and, my, and subtraction symbols from each other. So the two X plus two has to go as a group or it doesn't go at all. You cannot cancel the two X's. You cannot separate them from the two and the minus one. That's really about the most common mistake. Otherwise, it's just maybe in the factoring that people can make a mistake. 
All right, we are almost done. This is division. Now, division is very similar to the multiplication. So we have a little dog. His name is Stryker, he's a Papillon. So whenever anybody walks in, he lets us know. So I'm sorry. But anyways, let's go ahead and fin finish with this one. What we have in, in division, go back to your elementary years or you know when you're dealing with dividing fractions, it's a copy dot, which means multiplication, flip. It's exactly like this, the, um, the multiplication we were doing on the previous page, except for you have this one extra step. It's a copy dot flip, and sometimes they, they would say invert and multiply. But you just copy the first one, copy dot flip. And now it's exactly like the previous page. Anything in the numerator can reduce with anything in the denominator. And in this case, nothing in the numerator reduces with anything down here. So you multiply straight across. So it's, it's just like the denominator or the, um, the multiplication. It's just that you've got that one extra step of copy dot flip. So this is your answer. X, Y over 35. So we've got one, two, three, or four to practice, just to make sure. We're gonna, this first one, X plus two, it's kind of like a whole number, so I'm gonna put it over one times, oh, this doesn't, it looks a little blurry. I don't know if I can focus it or not, you guys. Yeah, it doesn't really wanna focus. Um, oh. So you have a copy, dot, and you flip the next one. You have to do this before you start to reduce. You have to do the copy, dot, flip before you start to reduce. So once you've done the copy, dot, flip, no factoring. There's nothing you can factor here. So you'll just um, see if you can reduce. Does anything in the numerator reduce with anything in the denominator? Here. Nope, none of these match. So your answer is x plus two because when you multiply fractions, you multiply across this way, times x plus three over x minus one. Ah, that's not a very good x. All right, there we go. Perfect, done with that one. Let's talk about the next one. It's a division. Oh, I don't know. I just, it bothers me that that's not that. Oh, well. It's, it just doesn't seem like it's really that much in focus. Let me see if I can make it. I don't know if I can make it larger. If that helps. Yeah, that kind of, maybe it helped a little bit. It might have. Oh, no, it didn't, did it? Oh, well. We'll just... Um, I'll, I'll try to get you guys these so that you can run them off. Okay, this one right here, we have x plus 1. This is our copy, x squared minus 1. Copy, dot, and then we're going to flip this other one, the reciprocal, over x plus 1. And then we treat it just like we do with the um, multiplication. You need to factor and cancel. And again, the first numerator, nothing we can do here. We can't, we can't factor that one. Let's look at the denominator here. This is a difference of two squares. Okay, factoring that, a difference of two squares. Um, this one, this numerator, x times x, 1 times 1, I want two negatives, because that will give me the positive and the minus 2. So after, again, make sure you do the copy dot flip before you do this part. Go ahead and reduce anything in the numerator with anything in the denominator. 
uh, let's see, let's do this X plus one with either one of these. It doesn't matter. We'll go with that one. Um, the X minus one with the X minus one. Uh, and that's it. So we end up with X minus one over X plus one as your answer. Copy dot flip, you factor and cancel, and then you multiply straight across and you've got it. But just in case it's still confusing, let's go through a couple more. And here we've got the um, copy. And so I'll take the a squared plus. Whenever you have a division, copy dot, we're gonna flip this one. Well, it's over one. You put your, it's kind of like a whole number over one. You make it a fraction so that when I flip it, I have one over 5a squared plus 10a. And now we factor and cancel. So let's start with this numerator. We'll always look for the greatest common factor, and in this case, there isn't anything. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to factor this, but I'm going to put it down here. So I'm just going to factor these and I'm going to put them in here. So this will be, this numerator here is a times a. Two times one is two, and both plus gives me the three a. Again, a squared plus four. This is not a difference of two squares. This one cannot be factored. So you have to leave it as a squared plus four. So do not factor a. Now, if it was a cubed plus eight, you could have factored using um, the, the formulas from chapter six. But this one cannot be factored because it's a sum of two squares, not a difference of two squares. Um, one cannot be factored. Um, this next one, the greatest common factor is a 5a. Leaves you with an a, because that gives you a squared plus 2. So we factored it all that we can. And now what we'll do is we'll um, cancel what we can. So a plus 2, a plus 2. That's it. Just those two. So we'll have in the numerator, multiplying across, a plus one over the five a, I'm gonna put it in the front because I'm taking this times this, but you are gonna have to put your a squared plus four in parentheses. And so, oh, sorry about that. So I, when I took the 5a, when I multiplied across, I put the 5a in front, and you do have to have parentheses around that. And you're done. Okay, perfect. Quest no, I can't have any questions. But again, you know, you guys can Zoom me if you have any questions. Let's do the last one. This has been a marathon. All right, it's a division. So we start out, we do a copy. So we copy the first one. Now oh, there's our x squared minus four, that'll be good. Dot, flip. All right, once you've done that, you can um, factor those, those numerator and denominator and see what we can cancel. Let's go ahead and factor this one. I think what I'll do is I'll just copy it down here. Make sure it's gonna show up, yeah. So um, factoring that first numerator, we'll have, uh, yeah, I need a little bit more room. X times X is X squared. Three times one gives you three, and we want a minus, two, so we'll go like that. That'll give us our minus three and our minus two. 
This one you can, as the other one you couldn't before because it was a plus four, but now it's a minus four, so it is a difference of two squares. And that's it for that one. And there's nothing we can do here, and there's nothing we can do here. So now we start to cancel groups that are exactly alike. And wow, they're not a lot. Just those x plus ones. That's it. So now when you write your answer, you should be able to just write x minus 3 times x plus 5, because when we multiply fractions, you multiply this way. And then in the numerator or the denominator, we have x minus 2, x plus 2. And that's it for these two sections, section 7, 1, and 7, 2. And I, I'm thinking probably the only one that might give you trouble are the asymptotes, um, as opposed to uh, as a whole. Is it a hole in the graph or is it an asymptote? But when you do your homework, they're not going to ask you for the whole. They just want the asymptote. And um, this was like, this was almost like, this, this was two days worth of classwork. Um, so I just want you to know that, uh, I can't, let me see, let me see this. Let, let me just kind of quickly go back if you're still watching. Um, just remember that they're going to ask you on your homework, where is it undefined? And you set the denominator equal to zero because it cannot be that. So then you set it, you know, it cannot be zero. So then you solve it by factoring because you have a square. So we're going to factor it and solve it. So then we have two possibilities, um, one from the x minus one and a negative one from the x plus one. Now, in order to determine if these are asymptotes or a whole, okay, you, they, they are undefined. Your answer for undefined is one and negative one. So those are undefined points, one and negative one. But to determine if it's an asymptote, we're going to go ahead and simplify. So you factor, you factor, so you factor the numerator, you factor the denominator, which we did over here, you cancel, and so your simplified answer is this right here. Well, sorry, no, it's not because you got to, you got to, sorry, you have to, you have to simplify the three and the 12. So you're going to come up with um, 3x minus one over four times x minus one. That's your simplified answer. If they ask you to simplify it. And the asymptote is at the one. It comes from this one because it did, it's still left over. Okay. Well, um, if, you, if, if a lot of people are still having trouble with that, I can always I can always do some more examples. But I think that's probably enough for right now. And I, you can get um, started. You can do section seven one and seven two now, which I will open up as soon as I I, I um, give you these lessons here. And then from now on, I'll probably just try to do one section at a time for a lesson, seven, seven, three, seven, four. So they're not quite so long, but you guys did great. And, um, we'll just make the best of it. I'm going to give you my, um, zoom room ID. And if you ever need some extra help on a problem, I encourage you just to kind of text me and say, can, can we meet in your zoom room? And th that would be great. And we'll, we'll, we'll try to